Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. Today is Wednesday, July 10th, 2013. More news is emerging on the crash of Asiana Flight 214 in San Francisco, the 777 that went down over the weekend. The first is that Willis Ree, the big reinsurance broker, is saying that the crash and the expected $100 million loss is going to do little to firm up reinsurance pricing for aviation. Willis said that it expects that the downward uh, pricing structure, which has been going on now for several years, will continue. Rates went down about 5% last year, and the $100 million payout will do little to change that. Meanwhile, the National Transportation Safety Board held another briefing late last night, and they said that, in fact, the four pilots who were in the cockpit seemed not to be paying attention to the uh, increasingly steep slope as the plane descended, as well as the reduced speed. The uh, training pilot, who was actually flying the plane, and the instructor pilot, who was on his first flight, were joined in the cockpit by a fully experienced captain and co-pilot who had flown the first leg of the flight sitting directly behind them. At about 500 feet, according to the briefer, the uh, front two pilots realized they were too low. Between 500 and 200 feet off the runway, they had a lateral deviation, and they were too low at that point, and they were trying to correct. Meanwhile, the auto throttles, which had been correctly set and armed uh, to maintain a speed of 158 miles per hour, uh, apparently, according to the briefing, may not have worked. So what happened is that the pilots, all four of them, who were sitting in the cockpit, did not notice that the speed, in fact, had dipped to 110 miles per hour, and they faced a stall situation, which, in fact, they encountered, which they then began to power up, but it was too late. One aviation consultant said that uh, maintaining proper airspeed and altitude is the most basic responsibility of the pilot. It's like breathing in and out. Two flight attendants, as it turns out, were actually ejected from the back of the plane and landed on the runway when the tail broke off. They miraculously survived, although they were injured. And at least one of the two deaths, apparently, was a Chinese student who was run over on the runway after surviving the crash by an incoming speeding San Francisco fire truck. In China, as well, earlier today, uh, bad economic news came out. Their exports and imports unexpectedly declined in the month of June. They dipped about 3.1% overseas exports from uh, a year earlier. Analysts had been expecting a 3.7% gain. Exports to the United States and Europe declined for a fourth straight month. In New Jersey, more fallout from Superstorm Sandy, the state's largest utility, public service, electric and gas, which has 2.2 million customers, filed suit against 11 insurers, including uh, Allianz, Ace, and American International Group. PSENG says that uh, they suffered losses of $426 million from Superstorm Sandy, and they uh, argued that the insurance that they had purchased from 11 insurers in total provided $250 million in coverage, and they also had an additional excess limit of $750 million. The lawsuit filed in Superior Court in New Jersey said that PSE&G said that the insurers have improperly, improperly limited their coverage liability to $50 million on caps on flood liability. However, PSE&G said that it was a named storm and the wind event was the first driver and thus the cap should not apply. They claim that New Jersey law allows uh, uh, more than one cause when a loss is incurred. Now this is an ongoing problem as to whether or not it was a flood or whether or not it was a wind event. If it's a flood event, many customers who did not have flood insurance are out of luck or they're covered by the caps and can't obtain any more claim coverage above the cap, as PSE&G has found out. But if it's a wind event, i.e. a hurricane, they are able to have the full extent of their policies pay out. New Jersey, as well as other states, for example, the Gulf Coast states after Katrina, has set up a mediation uh, board to be able to attempt to arbitrate these uh, contests. Meanwhile, the uh, Lloyd Syndicate Hiscox is uh, mired in a bit of a problem. Back in May, their chief reinsurance underwriter, Russell Merritt, went on a sabbatical. He was expected back in August. Apparently, Mr. Merritt is now not going to return until May of 2014. So Hiscox is looking for a new chief reinsurance underwriter. 
The big New Jersey-based insurance company Chubb expects natural catastrophes to cost it about a quarter of a billion dollars before tax in the second quarter, driven primarily by severe windstorms in the central U.S. Uh, also, the Bermuda-based company Validus Re is going to see about $70 million in losses coming from the European floods. Um, they uh, also expect that their Lloyds-based Talbot unit is going to pick up about $6.4 million additional in their losses. Meanwhile, right now in the Caribbean, churning away uh, a little bit to the east of the island of Hispaniola, shared by Haiti and the Dominican Republic, is Tropical Storm Chantel. Um, it's approaching uh, Hispaniola now with winds of about 70 miles per hour, heavy rain and the threat of potentially deadly flooding. Uh, Florida has their eyes on it, especially the southern part of the state. They expect that no matter what happens, at a minimum, a drenching is going to occur down in the uh, Dade County area and up to the north. They're watching the storm very carefully. They expect it to weaken as it moves over the mountains of Hispaniola, but it could pick up strength again as it nears the Bahamas. So they're uh, watching it closely. It does have a little bit of a suspicious pattern reminiscent of Sandy although most forecasters are expecting it to weaken. That is the news for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.